Welcome to Headingham Castle, the finest Norman castle in the land. It has stood here since 1140 and was built by our ancestors, the De Veres, who became the Earls of Oxford. They were one of the richest and most powerful families of the time. It remained their home for 550 years. Good morning and welcome back to the finest county in the land, Essex. I am here today on a very hot Sunday morning with my friend Dawn and we are visiting Castle Headingham, touted as the finest Norman keep in England. I came here a long time ago when I was at school on a, like a school trip and I suppose I didn't really appreciate it much at the time but now that my love of history has has grown especially castles I thought I've got to come back here every time I tried to come here though this place has been closed we finally found uh, a slot a day that was open like to come and view it I think there's going to be a tour I'm not sure but you can come and have a look around anyway so quids in uh, yeah it is a fantastic fantastic castle I would say if you've not been to Essex and or just you've not been to this part of the country and you're looking for a place to come and see and you like history, you've got to check out Headingham Castle. It is fantastic. It's definitely one of the jewels in Essex's crown. So, we're going to have a look around the castle, look around the grounds. From what I remember, there's a huge Norman arch going across one of the main rooms and I think it's the largest Norman arch in existence in Europe I'm not sure I can't remember anyway we'll find out when we get in there and um, I'm really looking forward to this one so I thought I've got to make a little video for you to see what it's like so yeah see how it goes anyways let's get in there and get exploring This room housed the soldiers and is known as the garrison chamber. It was of great importance in times of attack as the point of entry to the castle had to be defended at all cost. The groove above the door contains the portcullis raised and lowered on a pulley from the floor above. The large holes cut into the wall would house beams that could be slid into place to reinforce the door. Arms and armour were kept under close supervision here. Only knights and ranks above had the right to wear armour, and in Norman times this was chainmail, easy to make but difficult to look after, the main enemy being rust. The spectacular arch repeats the one upstairs but without the decoration. The fire was for warmth, since cooking would have taken place in another building outside long since vanished except in times of danger. The keep would have been desperately crowded during a siege, of which there were two, by King John in 1216 and the Dauphin of France the following year. Luckily the castle surrendered before any real damage was done, but in peacetime there was plenty of room within the castle and grounds since the whole complex was nearly half a mile across. This dark space may look like a dungeon, but was actually the basement and storage area of the castle. The dungeon is the now roofless chamber outside the main entrance to the keep. It would have been too dangerous to hold prisoners inside the castle. In its heyday, the castle needed a vast amount of food and equipment, and in this large area, it was safe from vermin and theft. Also, the temperature down here remains fairly constant throughout the year. The vitally important well was in the southwest corner and waste from the garderobe or toilets was collected in the cesspit in the corner opposite the staircase. The rough brick wall in the middle was built in the 18th century as extra support for the wooden floor above. Also at this date the two large entrances were cut through to allow carriages to be kept in here. 
Look at the huge thickness of the walls and the small slits which let in light. As we go further up the castle, we will notice the windows get bigger, less danger of forced entry higher up. Dawners draw my attention to the toilets. We need to check out the toilets, which is typical of her. There we go. That's your toilet. The old school toilets. No, they've blocked it off in case someone actually tried to use it. That's an original Norman light switch, by the way. Dawn. Did you see Did you see the original Norman light switch? No. Come and have a look, come on. It's only one of three in the country. Is it? Yeah, seriously, come and have a look at this. You wait. Look, original Norman light switch. Look. <laughs> 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 this is the toilet paper. Dunno, I'm not sure. Looks better than the stuff we've got now. Aloe vera ice wipes. Yeah, no, none of that, yeah. <laughs> and what would your highness like for dinner? <laughs> I swear you're not actually meant to sit in them chairs, but Dawn's doing it anyway. Dawn's from, the, e Dawn's from the East End, she does what she pleases. <laughs> This magnificent room was the banqueting hall and the headquarters of the Earl of Oxford and his immediate family in Norman times and is the best and most complete surviving example of a Norman domestic interior. The room functioned as the social and administrative centre, not just of the castle but also of the Earl's vast estates in other counties too. Much of the original plaster which contained horsehair can be seen on the rough walls and this would have been painted in geometric patterns. The room was also adorned with rich fabrics, wall hangings and rugs. There is a primitive lavatory garderobe concealed in the thickness of the wall in the northeast corner. Note the elaborate carving on the fireplace in a design known as chevron a standard Norman pattern found throughout the castle inside and out. The quality of the stonework and the fine decoration is generally only seen in other Norman buildings of cathedral status. The great arch spanning the room is larger than any found in existing Norman cathedrals and at 28 feet wide is believed to be the largest Norman arch to have survived anywhere. There's another medieval fire extinguisher and a Norman sound system. 
this would be a, a great place if you didn't like the king you could chuck nuts at him stop playing with stuff what are you doing don't just leave it alone can't take you anywhere see what you do right is get some kp dry roasted and just love them at him and go you know <laughs> peasants revolt 2022 <laughs> This arcaded passage within the thickness of the walls is known as the Minstrel's Gallery. Just behind us as we come in is a beautifully carved arch. Musicians and troubadours would have played here above the banqueting hall when the Earl of Oxford was entertaining. The windows of this gallery allowed light to filter down into the hall below. The Normans were fond of music. Some of it brought back from the Near East as a result of the Crusades. The De Veres were particularly zealous Crusaders. Unfortunately, we can't go up to the next level. Um, it says private, no access, escape room only. I think there's, there's an event going on today because they hire this out for special occasions and and whatnot. So we've, I think that's about as far as we can go, really, is the grounds. Yeah, that's it. So I think, yeah, upstairs probably would have been like the sleeping sleeping accommodation, like the Lord's Chamber and all that sort of stuff. Well you wouldn't there'd be a toilet, wouldn't there? <laughs> well no, it's the toilets in there. So if you slept upstairs you'd have to go No, they've probably got toilets up there, Dawn. Oh, come on, it's a Lord's Chamber. He would have had toilets. Imagine if he had to go outside to the dunny. Love, I'm just going out to the car Z. I'll be back. I would, yeah, they would have had chamber pots, you know. You're just pissing that. Anyway, this is, this is the sort of in-depth historical discussions me and Dawn have. Where would they have pissed? <laughs> and then we're back at the entrance and the gift shop. So we've just left the keep where <laughs> we, of course, plundered the gift shop. We nearly bought the wooden swords and shields and the bows and arrows that they sell for the kids, but at the last minute I was like, nah. We also, oh, we also had a really nice bit of cake each, the Sir Chocolat cake and a cold drink that was needed. Uh, we are now going to have a look at the Valley Walk. There's loads of like walks in and around the grounds of Hedium Castle. There's a wild woodland walk. Uh, a deer park loads of stuff so we'll show you little bits of that along the way so i can actually say in this video enough talking and let's get walking
Well, that's the end of the video. We're back at the car in the car park here at Hedion Castle. That was a really good little look round the keep and the grounds. Really extensive grounds here. Lots to see. You could easily spend a good couple of hours at least just wandering around those, let alone the rest of the keep. So I'm going to leave it here. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, we're going to head off to a beach now camp i'm not filming it we're just having a chill weekend because it's dawn's birthday until next time take care of yourselves look after each other stay safe everyone be nice get out there and explore see you soon bye thanks for watching